we're gonna flip this dresser that we found on Facebook Marketplace. If you're interested in furniture makeovers, make sure to subscribe and hit that post notification bell. First up, I'm removing the hardware. I absolutely love these Hepa White style poles, so I'll definitely be keeping them with the piece. Overall, this dresser is in great condition, but we do need to do a little drawer repair on this one drawer. You can see how it sits back a little bit too far and doesn't align with the other drawers. So I'll just be attaching a little block inside the drawer as a stopper. So I'm using my little mini hammer, which is great for tight spaces like this. And I'm just using another little triangle block in the back to align how far I want that block to go back. That's all that piece is for. So you can see that that drawer now lines up with the one below it, so that block worked. My next step is always to clean the piece really thoroughly, and I start off by vacuuming it out with my shop vac. So I'll vacuum out each individual drawer and then the inside of the piece as well. Just wanna make sure that I get any dirt, debris, dust out of there before I clean it with a degreaser. Crud cutter is my go-to degreaser. I love this stuff. It really cuts through any grime and gunk. I just buy it by the gallon size and refill my spray bottle. It's really important to use a good degreaser like crud cutter or TSP because you want to make sure you're cleaning that grime, years of furniture polish buildup, and you wanna do that before you sand because when you sand, you're gonna be pushing all of that buildup into your finish, which is going to cause adhesion issues. So make sure you clean before you sand. I mean, look at all of that buildup that I just got out of there. This is three individual rags that I used to clean that whole piece. Next up is scuff sanding. I'm using my Surf Prep 3x4 electric ray sander with the 10 millimeter foam abrasives. This is another step you don't wanna skip, scuff sanding. And it means just that, you're scuffing up the surface to prepare it for paint or primer. You do not need to strip sand, you're just removing that top shiny layer, and that'll really ensure adhesion and longevity for your painted piece. If you're sanding by hand, you can use 220 grit and that will work perfectly. Next up is primer. I prime almost all of my pieces before I paint them, and that's because I work on older vintage pieces and I'm typically worried about bleed through. I like to prime in white because I can see the bleed through, but I can also see some of the imperfections that I might need to fix, like open wood grain or some dents or dings that I might not have noticed previously. And I'm using my Wagner Flexio 5000 sprayer. It is a great sprayer for beginners. It is easy to assemble, easy to operate, easy to clean. So I highly recommend it if you are a beginner or you're looking to start spraying. I'll link it down below in the description box. It comes with one detail nozzle that I'm using here and one larger eye spray nozzle for bigger projects. I only use the detail nozzle for spraying furniture and I actually purchased a second one of these as well. Makes it very easy to swap between different colors. It has a separate turbine unit so you don't need an air compressor and then it just clicks right into the canister like this. All right, nobody make fun of my spray sock. I think I look like a chicken with it on, but it's worth it because it protects my hair from all the spray dust. A respirator is also very important when you're spraying, so make sure you have one. So here you can see some of the gaps and cracks along the trim on the drawer fronts. So I'll just use a little bit of caulk and run a bead along the trim there to fill it in. And this is my go-to caulk. It's the Alex Fast Dry from DAP. I'll just use this along with a wet paper towel to fill in those seams. I'll just run a bead of caulk down the drawer front and go back to wipe away the excess with my finger. It helps to keep your finger wet at all times and that's why I have a wet paper towel. You wanna make sure to remove all excess right away because you can't sand it, so you don't want it to dry. You wanna wipe away all the excess while it's still wet. Next up is filling all those imperfections. So I go back to fill in the dings and scratches, open wood grain with my DAP Premium Wood Filler. It is my go-to wood filler for all projects. And then I'm going back in with 220 grit sandpaper to sand off that wood filler after it's dried for a couple of hours. So here you can see a lot of open grain and this happens with older finishes. Even though I didn't sand through that existing finish, I do still have open grain here that I'd like to fill. So what I'm doing for my second coat of primer is I'll be going in with a mini roller and really working the product into all of that open grain. In between each coat of primer, I lightly sand with a super fine rad pad from Surf Prep. I do have the link below in the description box along with a discount code for you. 
This ensures for a smooth surface for your next coat of paint. Just make sure to go back in with a microfiber cloth to wipe it down beforehand. And I'm spraying my third and final coat of primer. At this point, I have blocked all the bleed through and now I'm ready for paint. We're going with the color Abyss from the One Hour Enamel line. I do sell this over on my website at carolinafurnituricollective.com. I'll also link it in the description box. I absolutely love this paint. It is so fast drying. It's 90% cured in one hour and you can recoat it at that one hour mark. It already has a built-in top coat. So after two coats of paint, I am done. And I'll be spraying it with my Stingray sprayer. If you're spraying your paint, just make sure that you mix it really well by stirring it, don't shake it, and you'll definitely want to strain it to ensure for a really smooth spray. Spraying definitely takes practice, but you'll want to make sure you're being consistent with your speed, distance from your piece, and you're overlapping your strokes by about half. And now I'm just cleaning the hardware and I'm using crud cutter again. Typically, if the hardware is brass, I'll use vinegar to clean them up, but since these aren't brass, I'm just prepping them for a rub and buff. So I decided on the European Gold Rub and Buff. It's a wax metallic finish and it's a great alternative to spray paint if you're looking for more of an antique or aged look for your hardware. I'm just using a small brush to lightly brush it on. I like to dab off the excess on a paper towel and then lightly dust it on the piece because a little bit does go a long way. And then I'll just go back in with a paper towel to rub off the excess and really buff it to a nice shine. And you can see here the difference that that really makes from the original pull. At this point, I'll go back in with a small brush and paint the edges of the drawers. I choose to spray my pieces with the drawers in because it saves me space, as well as time from wrapping each individual drawer with plastic to protect from overspray, but it's totally personal preference. One of the last steps I take with vintage pieces is to wax the bottom of the drawers and the inside of the dresser to make sure that the drawers slide really smoothly. I'll also take some furniture salve and apply it to the sides and insides of the drawers to really hydrate and protect the wood. I like to apply it with my two inch palm brush and you can find all of these products on my website. For the wax, I'll just use a paper towel to apply it and I run it along the bottom of the drawers and inside the dresser, wherever the drawers will touch. This furniture salve truly is amazing and it can be used for so many different things. You can use it on existing finishes or on raw wood. It helps to rejuvenate, revive, and protect the wood. These drawers are already in really great condition, so they don't need a ton of moisturizing, but this does add a layer of extra protection for them. I'll put a picture here of some previous drawers that have really benefited from the salve. And here's the finished look. I am loving this color Abyss. It is such a rich blue and it pairs so nicely with this aged hardware. Follow me for more furniture makeovers.